Hello everyone and welcome to today's podcast with myself, George Cuevas and Ross Gurdon. Today we'll be looking at the latest wildlife park to open, a rewilding project and answering some of your questions. But first, let's start with the news. So as you guys know, we've been following the two Sri Lankan leopard cubs at Bantam Zoo throughout the uh, episodes of our podcast. Um, and unfortunately, one of them has passed away. Uh, it's this one uh, on the big canvas here. Um, it's a real shame for everyone. Um, I had the privilege of visiting him quite a few times, so uh, it's a shame that he's passed away, but he'll always be remembered by everyone, and he was such a character, so um, yeah, rest in peace. Yorkshire Wildlife Park has opened a new area called Himalayan Pass uh, with red pandas and smooth-coated otters. In other news, the park near Doncaster is also obtaining Hamish, the male polar bear. He was the first polar bear uh, to be born in the UK for 25 years, I believe. Uh, and he will be coming uh, to Yorkshire Wildlife Park this autumn. And also, um, another sad passing. Um, Victor the polar bear has unfortunately passed away at uh, Yorkshire Wildlife Park. I believe he was 22 years old. Um, and yeah, that's a real shame that he uh, has passed away because, um, again, he was a real character. So, uh, yeah. Next up, Animal Park, the hit TV series about Long East Safari Park is now back on BBC. Uh, you can watch it um, on every weekday at 10am uh, and it follows uh, the story about what's going on at Long East Safari Park. Uh, we've both watched it and uh, it's been really interesting so far. As well as that, uh, Chester Zoo's Secret Life of the Zoo is also returning to Channel 4. Uh, I'm not quite sure on the date. Did they announce that? Have you? I'm not sure if they've announced it. Well, I, I just saw on their Instagram that it's it's coming soon, so uh, that will be back on Channel Four very soon. So make sure you you guys watch that as well, because that's known for being pretty pretty interesting. Yeah, it will be good to see some of the show's best moments being shown again. Mm. They started filming it in 2016 as well. It's been going a long time. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Uh, next up, Bristol Zoo have had an infant gorilla born on the 19th of August. Uh, they have also had twin golden lion tamarins that only weigh uh, 50 grams each. Uh, 50 grams? Yeah, 50 grams for a... That is... For a light. Jeez, yeah. yeah. Uh, both births um, of the species will be great for the future safeguarding of each. So yeah, good news. Uh, moving on from the news, we're now going to be talking about um, one of our first main topics of this episode uh, and it is about a new wildlife reserve called Watatunga Reserve, I believe. Watatunga? Yeah, I think it's um, And it's recently opened uh, in the UK um, and it's quite a unique concept, it's quite uh, different to some other sort of safari parks. Um, it's basically 170 acres of land uh, that you can visit um, and they house many species of ungulates uh, and birds um, and you can actually drive around in golf buggies and you're you're taken around uh, by a personal tour guide but you can actually drive the buggies yourself and you're actually in with the animals so uh, it's quite a good experience but um, neither of us have actually been yet but from what we've seen and heard from friends it's actually uh, a really good yeah, place looks good. Uh, and I'm, I'm pretty sure we'll both go at some point yeah. to uh, see it but uh, yeah, it looks it looks exciting. It'd be cool if we could film a podcast there as well. That would be cool. I just drive. We if might... you're from Watatonga, if you're one of the managers, yeah, we, hit, hit us you, up. Hit us up. We could help like advertise your 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 new attraction a little bit. We'll do we'll do um we'll do the podcast from Watatonga. Yeah, that, that would actually. Be or if you're from good. any other zoo. Yeah, yeah, we were we, thinking about doing that, like thinking about filming this like actually, actually at a zoo. So if you guys want us to do that, leave a comment below, suggest what zoos we could film at. And if you're like a zookeeper or you work at a zoo, then hit us up. Um, our Instagrams will be in the description. I, I'll try and remember to put them in the description. The park is currently home to over 20 different animal species, and if you want to go, you can pre-book online. You can also stay in the park's self-catered accommodation that looks over the reserve. The park works with universities and international research organisations to make sustainable populations of species. The aim is to inspire the next generation of conservationists and also show them the challenges of 21st century conservation projects. 
Um, so, yeah, it's very innovative. Uh, moving on to Bears About the House, uh, a great programme um, with conservationist Giles Clark um, as he tries to save uh, the populations of uh, sun and moon bears in Laos. The second episode of the series shows the harsh realities of the fight against illegal animal trades um, as two of the moon bear cubs are stolen and never found, unfortunately. Yeah, I mean, when I saw that, I was quite enraged, to be honest. Um, I mean, I, I never really understand why, how there are such awful people in this world to do that. But, um, yeah, I mean, it is sad, but, I mean, you've got to feel happy for all of the bears that he has managed to save. So... And I'm guessing he's only going to be growing that, uh, that wildlife reserve or the bear sanctuary uh, in Laos. Um, and yeah, hopefully uh, yeah. there'll be more rescues to come. Yeah, and well, after the, um, after the bears got stolen, they put in CCTV cameras yeah, as well yeah. to make sure it's... So hopefully, again. hopefully it shouldn't happen again. Yeah, uh, lost. But yeah, it's still a real shame. Yeah, it is very sad. Now on to the main topic of this podcast. Uh, this month's theme is all about rewilding animals. Um, and the first story that we have um, is coming from the Aspinall Foundation. Uh, I'm sure many of you will know that uh, recently uh, they have released two male cheetahs into the wild in South Africa. Um, and it's absolutely incredible. The cheetahs have both hunted for themselves now. And they are basically fully wild now. And they are free. Uh, they used to live at Howlett's. Uh, in a pretty decent home anyway, but now they're actually in the wild in Africa, which I think is just absolutely insane. Yeah, really. Yeah, it's good to uh, that how it's are expanding their track record on yeah. releasing animals. Yeah, because um, they've released gorillas, haven't they? Yeah, yeah. Black rhino, and I think uh, their sister park, Port Lynn, released like, their whole herd of grey zebra to the wild as well. So yeah. it's great that they're really doing a lot for conservation and hopefully well let's see what what the next animal is that they release yeah well hopefully the cheetahs continue to thrive yeah and many people that visit south africa get to see them over the mm. next coming years because they're currently being tracked so they've got like collars around the necks so um yeah they can be monitored just in case something goes wrong but as it stands they're, do they're both doing really well uh and uh I think they're together as well. They're sort of like working together to hunt. They haven't like gone solo. Yeah. I think they're they're in a bachelor group. Um, so yeah, they should live out the rest of their lives happy and free in the wild. So that's great. Yeah, and that'd be good for research as well. Of mm. Cheetahs that are living wild, and maybe potentially they could have some offspring of their own. Yeah, um, I mean that that would which be would be awesome. a great story. Next up, we'll be looking at the rewilding of beavers in the River Otter. A group of beavers reintroduced on the River Otter in Devon have been given the right to remain by the government. The reintroduction um, has been hailed a huge success after a five-year study. The trial is said to have shown the benefits of having the beavers on the river, um, including increasing the water quality, um, helping other species to thrive, uh, there's been an increase in populations of waterfowls, fish and some amphibians and also reducing the risk of flooding. Eurasian beavers first appeared on the River Otter in 2008, um, either by an unlicensed release or an accidental release. When evidence that the beavers had kicked in 2014, the government wanted to remove the beavers from the river. However, the Devon Wildlife Trust opposed this move. Um, and granted the five-year study which has had the outcome to allow the beavers to remain on the river. It's good for the beavers that they get to stay um, and could be good for you if you're planning, are you planning to trip down to see them? Uh, well yeah, I always like photographing British wildlife so I think it would be quite interesting. I've never seen a wild beaver before. So kind of beaver spotting. I don't know if I've actually ever seen a beaver ever. I've seen a couple of beavers. I've seen one in Vienna Zoo quite a while ago in Austria, but uh, I've never seen a wild one, so yeah, that'll be, that'll be definitely cool, especially if they're having babies as well. I'd like to see a baby beaver. Yeah. Moving on to the last part of today's podcast where we'll be answering some of your questions. 
So the first one comes in from Megan Lee Photography and she asks, what is the longest you have waited to get a photo? Well, I'll let Ross go first. Um, well, I'd say, I don't know, I, I'm not like you, I don't spend yeah, hours Yeah, I, I was going to say, I think I win on this one. Your guilty party on this one. Yeah. I probably, I don't know, I wouldn't say I spend more than maybe an hour anywhere. I know one time last year I was lucky enough to go to um, Tanzania and there was an area with uh, leopards and, and there was a leopard cub. Oh, I'm, so, I'm so jealous um, of that. I, was, oh, I, wish, I wish I could see a leopard cub. On um, this big rock that we nicknamed Leopard Rock. So Yeah, we'll put a pic you got a picture of it. Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll put a picture on screen now. Cool it was sick. It was like desert and then you just had this just like big like rock in just like the middle of nowhere and it was like full of leopards, wasn't savannah, it? Savannah, yeah. yeah. All, all, all the savannah. And um, yeah, no, I probably, I, I don't know, it's difficult. I was not really focusing on the time, but I would have said we were probably there maybe an hour and a half just watching this young leopard. Um, yeah. So I'm sure many of you know that Port Lim had lion cubs. I think it was last year or the year before. Uh, and I was desperate to get some good photos of them because I'd never really photographed lions before. Um, and I got there, I, I believe, 9.30 in the morning, 9.30 a.m. And I left right when the zoo closed at 7 p.m. So I was there for about nine hours. And I didn't leave the spot, the same spot. So I was literally stood at the lines for seven hours. I didn't go and see like, anything else in the zoo. I was just stood there for seven hours. Um, the worst thing is they only came out for about five minutes in the whole day. So literally I was just stood there like doing nothing for the whole day. And then I got like one picture at the end. And then the funny thing is I went again next week and I literally waited for 10 minutes and they, they came out immediately. So it's like... A bit like that sometimes. Yeah, it's always, they always surprise you, but... Uh, yeah. I wouldn't be able to spend nine and a half hours. I was going insane. pretty insane at the end because uh, the mum, uh, Lily, she kept going in and out and I thought she was going to bring the cubs up, but she never did. She just kept walking in <laughs> and out and she was tormenting me so much. And then she brought one out and then went straight back in. I got like one photo, but and then the second and third visits, I got way more and I waited for way less time. So it's kind of like... A bit like that sometimes, yeah. isn't it? Next question is from Charlie, the WWE. Uh, what is your favourite walkthrough exhibit in one of England zoos? Um, well, we go for the same one, actually. It's the, the squirrel monkey walkthrough at London Zoo. Or just any squirrel monkey. Just any, yeah. I mean, I just love squirrel monkeys. They're just so like, awesome, aren't they? Yeah, they're just like jumping around and like, usually they will just like jump on you and like sniff your camera and stuff. And I like, I like the one at Woven as well. They also yeah. have a squirrel monkey. I think they've closed that now. Though. Are they? Yeah, it's a shame. What, because of the virus or just... I, don't know, I think they've just closed it. Oh. Um, but um, mm. but that was still great though, I, like, I did like that one. I remember at London when there was, um, they, the squirrel monkeys all jumped in a buggy because you're not supposed to take buggies in and they just swarmed them. <laughs> Were they all, was there a kid in there? Uh, I can't remember. In a pram? Yeah, but it was a pram and they just all ran in. Imagine and there was, was a kid who was just running after them going, get out, <laughs> get out. Oh, um, but, and also when they're babies as well, it's cute. Because the babies are like, you could say they're more sort of curious than the actual adults are. Yeah. And they're a lot cuter as well, so. It's interesting, walkthrough exhibits are quite common now, aren't they? Especially mm -hmm. with, there's lots of lemur walkthrough Yeah, but there's exhibits. not many squirrel monkey ones, is there? If no, you think about hugely. it. No, hugely. Like, all I can think of is, is Woden's old one and then London's one. But, uh, yeah. And, and also the, I don't, it, the walkthrough at, um, London Zoo, the Rainforest Life, that's very good. Yeah, that is very good as well. So the next question comes from Giraffe Jack and he says, what is your opinion on the species class as least concern being kept in zoos? Um, well, they're good for education. Um, it's good for like, kids, especially, and older people to see uh, some of the least concerned species, yeah. like meerkats. Yeah. Just everyone loves meerkats. Yeah, everyone loves meerkats. And to... it, it gives them a more of like a variety to see. Like yeah. if you if you've just got like the critically endangered or endangered animals, then uh, I mean that's great for conservation. But like you'd be seeing like all of the same sort of animals at zoos. But then if you if you also have the least concerned ones, then you can really have like a, a variety of animals as well. 
yeah. and yeah, as you said, meerkats, otters, uh, they're not necessarily critically endangered. I mean, I think some species of otters are, but like... Uh, Meerkats, uh, meerkats definitely are, are quite popular. You see meerkats at most zoos. Pro- well. I can't actually think of a zoo that doesn't have meerkats. Yeah, most do. Yeah. So, um, but also, it's good in case in the wild that particular species population has a rapid decline. You have yeah, because you have a bunch of zoo, yeah. Because you, um, you can't get too complacent with like, oh, they're least concerned, so, so none of us need to have them. Like, just in case there's a massive, like, virus or, like, population drop, then it's good that you've got them, like, yeah. in a captive population. And you need, if you have plenty, then you've got a good gene pool, or you should have a good gene pool. Yeah, yeah. Um, which, potentially, if you need to, you can redu- reintroduce some into the wild. Yeah. Which is good. The final question for today's podcast is from Don Butler, and it is, what is a cat species you think is underappreciated? Um, do you want me to go first? You can go yeah. first. Um, I don't know. I mean, personally, we, we all appreciate all, all, all cats, but uh, I'm guessing you mean sort of like popularity-wise. I guess so. Like, yeah. I, can th- I haven't ever seen an Asian golden cat. I'd really like yeah. to see an Asian golden cat. I mean, they've got one at three. Three, yeah. Yeah, they're pretty cool. And not many zoos really have them. Not many people know about them. So yeah, an Asian golden cat is a pretty good one. Um, also, a marge as well. They're very rare, um, and they um, they kind of get overshadowed a bit by the ocelot because they they literally look like an ocelot but smaller. But uh, I think they're really cool. They're very sort of um, arboreal. I think it, that's the word. Where they spend a lot of their life up in the in the trees instead of on the ground. Um, and yeah, they're really cool and active. They've got a few at uh, Howlett's and. Port Lim, I believe. Uh, yeah, they've got them at Howlett's and uh, Port Lim Wild Wildlife Park. Uh, so that is the end of today's podcast. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, this will be the last monthly podcast, as unfortunately we both won't be free mm. um, on the dates over the next few months. Um, but yeah, if you want us to do more podcasts, yeah, in the I mean, future, like in in. We all get holidays off, like we can, we're thinking about doing like one uh, in every holiday that we get. So we might do one at Christmas, we might do one at Easter, uh, one at Halloween, I think we, we get that holiday, uh, holiday, holiday. Um, Maybe if we can get, like, if there's any anywhere we can get, like, features, if there's yeah. any, like, small zoos that we can yeah, film mean, at, then we'll definitely... <laughs> Yeah, do more. we'll definitely do special episodes because um, we, we obviously wanted to do more, but because we do it every month, um, they're obviously... It's difficult to get the time to do it. It's difficult to do it on every specific uh, yeah. tw- uh, 23rd. Yeah. You know, and we so. don't want to do it... Because obviously you see this on the 23rd, we film this. On the, the 22nd. Day, on the day before the 22nd. Yeah, and, and we don't want to start... Yeah, we don't want to really start filming it like weeks in advance. Mm. Just because some of the information will be out of date. Yeah, and they take so long to edit. I don't think you guys understand how long it takes us to to make these. Um, So we hope you've enjoyed. If this is the last one, then so be it. But if not... I reckon we'll do at least one more. I'm sure we'll do more in the future. Yeah, but it'll be a bit longer than a month until the next one. Probably do one maybe in the Christmas holidays or something. Yeah, depends how popular it is. Yeah, it depends how well it does. But uh, yeah, if you guys want us to do more episodes... Just comment uh, down below, uh, and as I said earlier, suggest like zoos that we could maybe film at. And if you work at a zoo, let us hit us up on Instagram. Uh, they'll be down in the description. Uh, we'll be we'll be more than happy to film uh, at a zoo. Um, be delighted. Yeah, that'll be great. That'd be awesome. Um, but yeah, that's everything. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching, and we will see you next time. See you Bye. later.